Hey everybody, welcome back to Extra Time. I'm Greg Lalas alongside Shep Messing and Jason, the producer. Act two, will call. It's kind of like when you re reserve a couple of tickets, but you never really know when you get to the stadium if they're going to be <laughs> waiting for you. And that's what we're going to do this in today's show. We're going to discuss those three teams that are right now, they have places, they're in the playoff zone, but they may not actually stay there the way it works out. We're going to start with Chicago. The Fire are now winless in six games. This is not the way to be getting into the playoffs. They play yeah. Chivas on Thursday. Jason, what do they need to do to stay in there? Well, they definitely want to avoid backing into the playoffs. Right. They really need a win or a tie against Chivas. If they get either of those, they're in. It's as simple as that. If they lose, there are ways to get in, but they right. don't want to go that route. It comes down to all these tiebreakers that yeah. are very convoluted, and we really just don't have time to go through the calculus of it all. Right. But, Shep, this Chicago team right now, they've been struggling. They got Blanco back this past weekend. They earned a draw in New England and probably deserved a penalty when Chris Rolfe went down. I was about to say that. So I like the Chicago team. I like their chances. I like John Bush in goal. Mm -hmm. I think they've adjusted to the players they've lost to injury mm -hmm. and going overseas. So Blanco back in the lineup. Chris Rolfe looks good. Rolfe should have gotten a, a PK against New England. Didn't get the call. I like Chicago to get in. And McBride, he needs to be a factor in this. Uh, definitely. I think, you know, even with all the struggles that Chicago's had, they were playing with, you know, pieces missing here and there. Rolf missing, Conde missing, yeah, But McBride at this time missing. of year, every team is playing with pieces, uh, right? I get you so. wrong, but the fact is now Chicago's getting those pieces back. Now, yeah. I don't know if Conde will be back, but they do have Rolf and Blanco and McBride now, so that should be enough, I think, for them to poach a goal against Chivas. If they don't get the win on Thursday against Chivas, it's going to be nerve-wracking, to say the least, because they're going to have to wait through the weekend to see whether... They make it through. That right. Thursday game, by the way, is on ESPN2, and it is the impact game of the week in MLS, so Definitely. be sure to watch that. That's going to be a good one. Colorado is also going to be in a good one. It is the Rocky Mountain Derby, if you will. They're playing against Real Salt Lake. Colorado not in yet. Real Salt Lake, if they get a win, they can draw, you know, come up equal with Colorado. What does Colorado need to do to, to get in the playoffs? This is another one for Colorado. They need to win the game. They can get in with a tie, but again, it's difficult. There's a lot of tiebreakers, a lot of possible things that could happen. Mm -hmm. Colorado could lose the game and get in, right. but again, way too many things need to happen if that happens. So if you're a Colorado fan, just root for the win. Well, they certainly need to win. The problem for Colorado right now is that they're winless in six, and uh, I was looking at the stats. Connor Casey has not scored a goal in the run of play for over a month. Yeah, that's a surprising thing for me because I like this Colorado team, and as a, as a pairing up top, Omar Cummings and Connor Casey, they've been wonderful, but Connor Casey has fallen off in the run of play. So they need service in the midfield. They need to be organized, of course, defensively, and use the speed and width of Omar Cummings to open things up against Salt Lake. What, what they do have going for them right now is they're getting Medi Bellucci back. Mm -hmm. They're getting Julian Baudet back in the back. Baudet's so, a big pickup to yeah, get back in so there. Yeah, so you know, solidify the back a little bit, get a, a creative player in the midfield. It could be the spark that they need to finally start scoring those goals. The veteran leadership of, of Pablo Mastroianni. Mm -hmm. I, I think he could taste it. He knows that they can pretty much control their own destiny, go out there, beat Salt Lake, get a victory. I like Pablo Mastroianni to take that team on his I shoulders. I still think the problem for Colorado is going to be out on the flanks. They still don't have that flank play that they mm -hmm. really need to get a guy like Connor Casey some more goals and some scoring chances. And you see that his run of play goals have gone down since the flank guys have gone down with injuries. A team that hasn't been struggling with injuries as much this year as some of the other teams, although they did have to replace their goalkeeper over the weekend. Toronto FC. They got a huge win against Real Salt Lake. This is three points that they absolutely needed. And they got it. It wasn't really pretty, right? But they got the three points. Jason, what does Toronto need to do to stay in that last position? I think similar to what they did in this game against Salt Lake. They played three in the back. They overloaded the midfield a little, tried to get more possession, push more forward. I mean, obviously, they're struggling to score goals. Right. So the more they can do going forward, the better. And the struggling with score goals is the frustrating thing. I watch this game against Salt Lake, and I see Chad Barrett. I don't know how many times he's going to get into good positions. And he either waits and waits before he pulls the trigger, or he gets into a good position, he tries to hit it as hard as he can, and he doesn't hit the target, so he also there's no rebound or anything like this. And they're still a very good team, and I like their chances in getting in the playoffs. Way back when, I picked Toronto and Seattle getting the MLS Cup final, so I'll stick with Toronto for me because of the strength in the midfield. You talk about the rookie year of Sam Cronin, and now De Guzman, Amado Guevara, wherever De Rosario plays, they have so many talent play, talented players 
players who can defend, win the ball, and play make. I like their chances in the midfield. So many options, basically, right? Yeah, I mean, I think my problem with Toronto is they, they've managed to do the same thing in the last two games. They got that goal. They got that goal that they need. They had the momentum. They're pushing forward. And they're hit. Like you said, Barrett's not finishing. I mean, Dayro had a basically a one-on-one with the goalkeeper. He gave it up. Cronin tried to pass back to him. Right. It was a mess. They need to be able to finish off games. They need to put that second goal in while the other team is down. Well, they're playing against New York. So you'd think against a Red Bulls team that is, has some injury problems themselves, obviously they're in last place and they're decimated by their morale and everything like that. You'd think even in New York, they should be able to get three points. I, I think it'll be a challenge because Richie Williams in his short time as the head man on an interim basis, he's gotten the team more organized. This will be the final game ever played at Giant Stadium before the spectacular new arena next year. So a little bit <laughs> of emotion <laughs> for New York. <laughs> well, you picked them in the ET Cup. You picked Toronto to beat New York 2-1. to one, I so. love them in the midfield, and I think right. they need to attack this New York Red Bulls team. New York has not had a good year. They do. They can't give Kanji and Richards the freedom, that's and I think that's going to be the, the problem. Key. If they do play three in the back, those that wide area for Kanji and Richards could expose them and Angel potentially back on the field. That's the key. You have to slow down those wingers and those fast guys mm-hmm. for New York. Well, that's it for the teams that are in the playoff zone and what they need to do. On Thursday, we're going to look at some of the teams that are outside the playoff zone. There are four teams that could still sneak into the playoffs, and we'll break down what they need to do to get a ticket to the dance. One last note, don't forget that this is the last week for the Extra Time Guest Reporter Contest, where you can win a trip to MLS Cup and join us on the air. Go to our website on MLSNet.com for all the details, and join us for Act 3 on Thursday.